Hi, my name is T. Payton. I'm a Final Cut 10 editor and creative director in Albuquerque, New Mexico. One of the things that's come up with Final Cut 10 is how do you deal with custom resolutions for projects, for timelines? Well, let's look at that. In Final Cut 10, I'm going to make a new project. In Video Properties, I'm going to choose Custom. Okay, here's our standard things, but we don't want anything standard. Let's go to Other. I would like just to type in a value. I can't type in a value. There's just these two presets. Hmm. Well, now, creating projects isn't the only way to make timelines in Final Cut 10. You can also choose new compound clips. Let's see if we have any luck with that. Custom. Come on. Ugh. Same deal. I can't do it. Hmm. Well, now, Final Cut 10 and Motion 5 share the same rendering engine. So, they should be able to play back the same footage. And you know what? They can. They can play back nearly anything. Look at the screen recording I made just a few minutes ago. So look at the specs in here in the info palette. 1600 by 1200 15 frames per second. That's odd. H.264, in fact. Does it play back? Sure. Plays back just fine. Hmm. If there was just some way to take the values for that clip and stick it onto a compound clip, Oh, we'd be in business. Well, you can do just that. It's so easy. Let's click on this clip and duplicate it. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is this little icon right here. Let's go ahead and name this Funky Timeline. And now double-clicking on it doesn't do anything. But if I right-click on it and choose Open in Timeline, hmm, it's open in the Timeline. Icon's still the same though. What if you add anything to it? Now look what happens. The icon has changed to a compound clip icon, and in fact, this is a compound clip. And in this timeline, you can do anything you would do with a normal compound clip, and many things you can do with a project. You can share it, and you can edit away. So this is the first part of how you can really use compound clips for custom resolutions in Final Cut 10. Let's look at a real life example. So, we made a corporate video for a client. They love it. They want to display it in their lobby. They've got this 720p vertically mounted display. What do we do? Well, let's start by creating a preset for Final Cut 10 to grab a hold of. Now you can use pretty much any compositor for this, but since motion is something that many Final Cut 10 users have, it's a great place to start. So let's go here to a motion project and let's choose our starting place, which is a 720p. And it was at 23,988. Okay, great, but I want to flip it around. So let's choose custom. And now let's just flop these numbers 1280. I'm sorry, 720 by 1280. Um, square, perfect. 10 seconds, really doesn't matter how long it is, but that's going to be fine. Create this. Let's take a look and see what we have. Okay, that looks about right. Now what do you do? Just export. I'm going to make this in H.264 because we're really not going to use it. We just need to suck the preset or the data from it. So I'm going to choose next and we'll call this 1280 by 720, 2398 preset. Okay. Now Motion is going to render this very quickly. And like I said, it doesn't, isn't really a problem that we use H.264. Let's go into Final Cut 10. Now I'm going to drag this from my desktop into a thing called Preset Templates. It's a keyword collection I already made. The green arrow is there you, so you can see that it is going to be copying the file into the Final Cut Events folder. So now in Preset Templates, here we've got our template. Let's take a look at what we've got. Hmm. So far in the viewer, this looks right. Um, 720, 1280, um, 2398. Perfect. Just what I need. So let's change this into a timeline. I'm going to select this, choose Duplicate, and we'll call this Wall Display. Now I'm going to do my little magic, Open in Timeline. Here's my timeline. Now this time, instead of adding a title, I'm really going to add some footage. So let's say I already had my video edited. 
So I'm going to go here to stock and I'm going to grab something. Okay, I want that it to extend the entire timeline. So I'm going to click here on this clip, choose X to set my in and out point. And then in my event browser, since I have this chosen, I'm going to hit Q and it's going to pop right up there in the right place. I'm going to do the same thing with this and hit Q and just stack those. Okay, great. Now, one thing that's happening, it shrunk this video, this stock footage, by the way, is 1080p. It shrunk that to the size, and that's set by the spatial conform setting right here for each clip. So this is set to fit, and it's doing exactly that. You could set it to fill, be a big old thing, or you can set it to none, which will be its native resolution. And that's what I want right here. So I'm gonna drag this down here. I'm gonna select this other one, change the spatial conform to none. And I'm gonna zoom out here and do a little bit of movement. Now, one of the things I'm doing that I didn't even show you is I am in the transform mode for the viewer. And one of the neat things about the transform mode that's right here on this button is that once you're in it, you can click on a clip, any clip, and it will select it and you can modify it. So it's a great fast way to work. I'm gonna add one more thing to this. I'm gonna hit X again on that clip. I'm gonna go ahead and add this title back in just so I can have a little more interest. Okay, great. I'm still in the trans, viewer's still in transfer mode. I'm gonna add some space for that. I'm gonna nudge that up a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Play this back. Beautiful, just what I need. Now, what I would suggest, if really doing a project like this, I would have edited these videos already. I, I might have done it in a compound clip or a project. I might drag the whole thing into a new compound clip inside a project so I'd have some freedom to edit, and I could have some freedom to break it apart once I'm here in the timeline. But just for simplicity's sake, I just drag a couple clips on here to show you the possibilities. So now, I want to export this. So I'm going to make sure I clip on the time, click on the timeline, choose Share, Export Media, and let's see if this thing really works. I'm going to go to an H.264 file for this client's display. Let's look at the summary. Width and height, 720 by 1280, frame rate 23978. Hmm, 976 rather. Looks good. Let's see if this really works. Now you'll notice one thing I didn't do, render. In my workflow, I haven't really found a need to render. My machine's fast enough, it plays back pretty much anything in real time. And I've done some tests looking at how long it takes to render on the timeline opposed to rendering when you're exporting. And it's about 10 times faster to render when you're exporting. So here is our vertical clip, this open up in QuickTime Player. And it plays. Hmm. Let's look at the info on this. Sure enough, it's just what we need, 720 by 1280. So this is how you can make custom resolutions in Final Cut 10. See you next time.